Testing one, two, and trois, ichi ni sanchi. Hi guys, welcome back to VR Essentials. We're here talking about the practical uses of virtual reality. Big welcome to you if it's your first time to the channel. And of course, a huge welcome back to our regular viewers and also awesome subscribers, because it's thanks to you, of course, that I always want to upload new content to this channel. Now, today's video is a little bit special. It's more about providing you some educational uh, content as to why we personally will be in the next 24 hours or so. It's the October 27th here in Singapore. Uh, about 10 30 uh, 9 9 p.m almost uh you know and next 24 hours it will be facebook connect 2021 uh, with all the unveiling about the oculus quest 2 pro oculus quest 3 uh, ar headsets and also various different apps that they'll be talking about and we are going to be personally boycotting this event and i'd like to provide you some share with you our reasons why as to what why we're going to be doing this uh you know because we feel that what they've been doing is quite atrocious to be honest with you so let's just transition over um you know and show you exactly as to what's been going on now the first thing i would like to educate you for those who don't know me uh my name's Ladius, and you know i have worked with people um you know including the Billboard, uh, the creator and the ex-president of the uh, Billboard Music Awards. Here he is. So, um, you know, I, I, there he is here. This is, uh, this is his name, Rick Garson here. Um, you know, we've done some hologram events together. Uh, you can go to my website. It's all there. Um, and also, if you go to the media section or in the press section, uh, you'll see that, you know, there's a whole bunch of different media articles uh, about my work uh, that's been published in CNN, uh, the Rolling Stone magazine, uh, China Central Television, uh, you know, all these kind of different things. And also I've worked on campaigns for uh, INSEAD, uh, which was voted by uh, the Financial Times, uh, you know, uh, the world's number one MBA uh, program uh, back in 2017, I believe, uh, something like that. And I helped to project manage the team uh, who pitched for the global website revamp, which uh, eventually was actually rewarded to us uh, worth more than a million euros and a whole bunch of other things that I've done in my career. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to 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 make uh, to, to, to share this information because I'm not here to create hype on this channel. I really do feel that it's very important to provide, um, you know, responsible content to you as to what goes on on this channel and why we do certain things. It's not to try and boost views and all this. Honestly, if it was, then I would just create Oculus Quest content all the time, like people like Natey or the guy from uh, Mike from VR Oasis, you know, all these people who, who personally I feel uh, are putting clicks and revenue before um, consumers, but that's just my personal opinion. They have their own reasons as to why they do things. I just prefer it would be great if everyone could come together in the community and actually uh, provide more responsible content and education back to you, our followers, our subscribers. So at the end of the day, um, you're safe and more importantly, your kids are safe because Facebook uh, have mentioned, especially in the last few uh, the last week or so have said that they will be specifically targeting young adults and teenagers uh, so do be very cautious and i think this is something that uh, our next generation should be much more aware of so let's just transition over once again and talk about all the various different things so if we go first to the um rolling stone um let's just go to the rolling stone so basically as you guys know a whistleblower has come out recently, uh, you know, coming forward uh, with a whole bunch of documentations, uh, which has been spread, passed over to various different news publications. And here are some of the things that have come out in the recent times. Um, first of all, Facebook ignored internal complaints about the spread of posts with political misinformation leading up to the 2020 uh, US elections. Um, so a few days before the election day last November, one employee sounded an internal alarm to let members know that comments with the most incendiary election misinformation were being amplified to appear at the top of comment threads, according to the Times. Then on November 9th, 
of uh, a Facebook data scientist's message colleagues with an eyebrow-raising stat, 10% of the US users posting political content were claiming that Joe Biden win was fraudulent and that the process was rigged to keep Donald Trump from returning to office. Additionally, uh, some of these posts seem to aim to incite violence. Uh, the other thing that was reported was Facebook didn't do enough to stamp down stop steel groups ahead of the insurrection. Enforcement uh, was piecemeal. So um, after Donald Trump uh, supporting rioters stormed the US Capitol on January 6th, um, some employees complained about Facebook uh, being ill-prepared to react with the necessary expediency. The New York Times recently reported that several messages from employees cited dozens of stop the steel groups pushing lies about the election that were active up until the insurrection. Other things that have happened, uh, Facebook matched a QAnon conspiracy phase, fa theory, sorry, mushrooms, so basically a whole bunch of misinformation and conspiracy theories came up and Facebook didn't do anything about it, even though there um uh, the executives and the colleagues did mention this, uh, but again, they decided not to do anything about it. Uh, Facebook routinely makes exceptions for powerful actors when enforcing content policy. So Facebook routinely makes exceptions for powerful actors when enforcing content policy. A data scientist wrote in documents created for a Facebook presentation with political, uh, political sorry, reported on Monday. This analyst and the list also pointed out that final calls about content policy are routinely made by senior executives. Sometimes make Mark Zuckerberg, they added that it's unclear why executives would be consulted and questioned if there were an unwritten aspect to our policies, namely to protect sensitive constituencies. The analysts reference many communications with colleagues on Facebook's content policy team, which is based in Washington, D.C., who feel pressure to ensure the recommendations align with the interests of policy makers. So basically, a lot of lobbying going on. A lot of the content is being policed to uh, basically favor specifically uh, political parties or uh, advertisers or whoever might be, you know, um, uh, incentivizing uh, specific policies. Among Zuckerberg bowed to Vietnam censorship demands. So apparently, uh, the Communist Party in Vietnam uh, which is a staggering $1 billion in revenue, have actually asked Facebook to take down specific posts in their favor. And apparently they did so because it favored uh, the revenue stream. Uh, I will put a link in the description below to all these articles. Uh, documents show Facebook didn't do much to stop the spread of violent rhetoric around the Ethiopian civil war. For over a year, Ethiopia has been suffering through a turbulent civil war and Facebook neglect... Um, of the African nation has allegedly been making matters worse. Uh, documents reviewed by CNN show that the company has failed to equip local teams with necessary staffing related resources to navigate such a fragile period. Despite multiple instances of employees alerting the company to a variety, a variety of foreign organizations uh, and armed groups spreading hate and violence. Um, also, Apple almost booted Facebook and Instagram from the App Store because it wasn't doing enough to stop human trafficking in the Middle East. Uh, Facebook was being used, used to buy and sell maids in the Middle East who were then abused um, a human trafficking violation flag by employees that Facebook didn't do much to correct. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reported on the issue in September and the Associated Press uh, so the AP followed up with a news, a new report on the following Monday. It got so bad, the outlet noted that Apple threatened to pull Facebook and Instagram from the App Store completely. Facebook admitted in internal documents um, that it was under enforcing on confirmed abusive activity. And the AP notes that it still isn't hard to find listings selling women for domestic uh, help on the platform. Um, also, another one, Facebook allowed Arabic hate content to spread across its platforms a lot. Um, so again, apparently Facebook didn't do anything about this, even though um, sites a lot of harmful ads targeted at women and the LGBTQ community. These ads, however, were rarely flagged by Facebook in MENA territories. Meanwhile, Facebook was incorrectly detecting terrorist content across the region, resulting in the deletion of non-violent Arabic content. 
are 77% of the time, according to a political report published on the Monday. Um, and then other things that have coming along, including Ar uh, Iraqi militias have been posting child nudity uh, on Ravel's Facebook pages, and Facebook hasn't taken anything off or done anything about this. Um, Facebook has allegedly been allowing anti-Muslim hate content to spread through India. Uh, apparently, this was reported by the Wall Street Journal, but yet Facebook hasn't really done anything about that, and a whole bunch of other things. So uh, now, just to just just to make things clear, that also um, now, of course, a lot of the things that happen at Facebook could be a political move, of course. Um, Facebook has been driving a lot more revenue for its company over the last few quarters, even though despite all these kind of things, Facebook have also, uh, you know, been taken to court by every single state in the United States for antitrust um, uh, breaches uh, and also anti-competitive laws because basically what's happened is, as I mentioned countless time on the channel, they've been buying out various different competitors uh, you know, sparing the monopoly uh, from the company. But the one thing that really shocks me the most about the Facebook practices is that now Facebook has grown for whatever it is. Um, you know, it used to be a really cool company. I, I really backed it, especially when it first came out. But it's just overgrown. You know, the, the management, what they've done, unfortunately, is put their own bottom line first before us, the consumer. And I think this is really where the problem lies. It's not so much that it's a a devil company and we, we're here to be out against them and you know there's a lot of good that they could actually provide the world to be honest with you if they would just focus more on that also let's not forget that the algorithms are tweaked manually even though they do use a lot of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is not where you know you see in the matrix or in the movies where it can make its own own decisions uh, without human interference no it cannot it still needs human interference and also it needs to be tweaked in specific ways so that it can do things for the better good of humanity. So sometimes we are human, we do make mistakes, but at the end of the day, if things are reported to the management and the management say, well, we don't care, now that's where the line needs to cross. So here are some of the things that to me uh, was really shocking, and this is where I really decided to stop uh, selling uh, things on the, uh, you know, on, on the platform. That's a little too simplistic. It's the gradual, slight, imperceptible change in your own behavior and perception that is the product. And that is the product. It's the only possible product. There's nothing else on the table that could plausibly be called the product. So uh, this is, by the way, from the documentary on Netflix, which you can go and view freely on YouTube. I'll put the link description below, which is all about executives that worked at Facebook and other various social media who came forth to share information about what is really going on. This was filmed a couple of years ago, I think, or a year or two ago, I can't remember. Um, so way before the whistleblowing stuff, um, I mean, the recent, res the recent whistleblowing stuff, of course. Um, and, and this is talking about the algorithms uh, that are using our data uh, that they're mining for the purpose of the advertisers. And also, uh, yes. That's the only thing there is for them to make money from. Changing what you do, how you think, who you are. So it's he's, he's saying that basically, um, you know, the way that the data has been used now is that they're analyzing us, everything that we do, every post that we, we comment on, every like that we, we click on or dislike or whatever it might be, to use basically this data in order to infiltrate thoughts into our uh, brain so that gradually over time, very slowly, it's not done in a very quick manner, so that you change your behavior uh, to benefit the advertisers and the social fabric of society um, so that they can generate more revenue. It's a gradual change, it's slight. If you can go to somebody and you say, give me $10 million and I will change the world 1% in the direction you want it to change. It's the world that can be incredible. And that's worth a lot of money. Okay. This is what... So this is Sushana Zuboff, uh, Dr. Sushana Zuboff from the Harvard Business School, um, who shared what, what, what Facebook did. To have a guarantee that if it places an ad, it will be successful. That's their business. They... So their business sell certainty. They sell certainty. In order to be successful in that business, you have to have great predictions. Great predictions begin with one imperative. 
you need a lot of data. So uh, what, what basically happened is they, let's see what she has to say. Facebook conducted what they called massive scale contagion experiments. Okay. How do we use subliminal cues on the Facebook pages to get more people to go vote in the midterm elections? And they discovered that they were able to do that. One thing they concluded is that we now know we can affect real world behavior and emotions. So what she's basically saying is that, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is that basically um, now Facebook have been conducting many experiments on us uh, since the year 2000s. Um, if I go to another page here, it manipulated apparently more than 60,000 people. Let me just find the article very quickly. Here we go. Uh, where is it? Okay, so it conducted uh, a mood manipulation experiment uh, on 700,000 Facebook users back in uh, 2012, where basically they gave a certain proportion of the population or the Facebook users um, positive things to click on and to look at, and another portion um, negative and sad things to see how they would react. And also, um, we know that the other things that Facebook haven't, um, you know, done anything about is the fact that uh, the internal research found that its Instagram platform contributes to eating disorders and suicidal thoughts in teenage girls, uh, according to whistleblowers. And again, um, you know, Facebook didn't do anything about that, uh, which is super tragic. Uh, what is super tragic is Facebook owned research says as these young women begin to consume this eating disorder content, they get more and more depressed. It actually makes them use the app more, Hogan said. They end up in the feedback cycle where they hate their bodies more and more. Facebook's own research says that Instagram is distinctly worse than other forms of social media and harms teenagers, Hogan said. The company announced plans last March to build a version of the app targeted specifically at children under the age of 13 years old. So guys, this is really why I do these videos because I really want you to be aware that your kids are going to be victims of this company if you're not careful because they're specifically building a metaverse um, for young adults, not for us. Not for us who are in our 30s and above. For people who are younger than us, they are naive as hell like we were back when we were teenagers and in our early 20s. We didn't know anything about the world even though we thought we knew everything about the world, okay? So just be aware. This is why I do these videos. I think it's very important information to educate you in terms of this content and as to why we don't carry any Facebook VR headsets on our channel. And I'm very sorry if you have an Oculus Quest, but I would much rather provide this information to you. So do be aware that Facebook do conduct all these experiments. Um, you know, and also if I go to another uh, article that was by The Insider, which is here, Facebook former vice president for user growth, Shama Palifapitiya, recently said, we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works and advise people to take a hard break from social media. His common echoed, those of Facebook founding president Sean Parker, who said social media provides a social validation feedback loop, a little dopamine hit because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post. That's exactly the thing of a hacker life myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in human psychology. This parallel was Tristan Harris said, and I echoed in a recent Pacific a uh, hard post that social media is a race to the bottom of the brain stem. So do be aware that, you know, um, Facebook is basically, you know, doing this. They will be doing the same thing in all the Oculus Quest uh, apps and how they basically get the apps to be approved inside of the Oculus Quest store. I believe in the future because they're going to be requesting, you know, developers to say, we need more of this, we need more of that. This is what sells. This is what, 
It's all about retention. It's all about advertisers in the future. If an app is not uh, retentive enough, if it doesn't provide you these dopamine hits that you need and also the mood dopamine hit. By the way, there are studies as well conducted by this which, uh, which, which compare dopamine hits with methadone drugs, which basically means that the, the, the less dopamine you get, if you have a less of dopamine in your brain, it will act the same way um, as if you don't take meth and it could potentially cause more depression, more sadness, and also uh, more suicidal thoughts for those who are more prone uh, to this specific you know, side of, 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 of disorders. Uh, and this is where basically Facebook didn't do anything about it until uh, too many people put too much pressure on them. They then basically decided to do something about it. However, um, <laughs> what they then did is they're making this data about people who have these tendencies of self-harm uh, to be shared with various different uh, in, in enforcements like police force or various different people like that who can then contact these people to say, well, wait a minute, um, these people are about to do self-harm to themselves. And then it calls another whole saga uh, about people who being, um, you know, like, well, wait a minute, what if Facebook gets hacked? And this information uh, of Facebook rating people's likes and rating people's comments and rating people's from one to 10, basically they had this system of every time you click on something, uh, whether it means you're going to create, cause self-harm to yourself what if this data gets hacked what if what if this data gets sold to third parties again um, so that basically uh, again it changes that person's thoughts they will then want to buy specific medication um, or they would potentially uh, cause specific uh, actions to themselves or people around them I mean <laughs> I can't say anything more guys honestly I'm, I'm just so, I'm not biased, I'm, I'm not putting a view on, uh, you know, I, I believe that Facebook at the end of the day, you know, could be great for humanity. I'm just saying that I believe the management is obviously making a huge, um, you know, I'll make it huge mistakes. They're not, they're not there for, for the purpose of, uh, you know, of, of us. And, and also the other thing, guys, I just wanted you to know that, you know, I, 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 I was actually an advertiser. I paid Facebook ads uh, myself around ten thousand US dollars for a website, a, a startup that I used to own called SingaporeParties.com.sg. In the space of five years, we had almost a million visitors who came to the website. You could see that in the space of one year, from April 17, 2010, to May 17, to 2011, we almost had a hundred thousand visits. Uh, the previous year, we had almost 100,000 visits as well. And you know, I paid almost 10,000 US dollars um, twice on Facebook. And unfortunately, Facebook did practice and still do, by the way, because the last campaign that I did was for my VR parties startup. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they employ bots. Um, you know, they employ bots to click on your ads. And this is money I'll never get to see back. Like I could go to my website and I was like, how come my advertising campaigns on my Facebook told me I had all these tens of thousands of people that went to my website, but then when I go to my website, I don't see any data of people going to my site. And more importantly, no leads calling me, no leads sending emails, nothing. This is because it wasn't real people that went to my website. And when I spent the same amount of money on Google back in those days, I had so many people send us emails, inquiries, people calling my company to actually make and drive revenue. That's also how I know. And believe me, as I mentioned before at the beginning of this of this uh, uh, this video, I'm used to social media. I've worked on on campaigns worth a million euros. <laughs> um, I've worked on on campaigns with 3M. I've worked on campaigns with NCAD. I've worked on my own social media driving. Uh, uh, almost 200,000 people coming to my website in the space of two years, more than almost uh, a million people in the space of five years for this specific company. And I've been in this business for more than 10 years. I know how to drive a social media campaign, all right? I know how to do Google ads. I know how to do uh, Facebook ads. I know how to do Instagram ads and all these various different things. I know how to use all the tools and metrics, the analytics. I know how to do all this kind of thing. I was trained to know how to do this kind of stuff. 
I can spot, I can smell when it's a bot that's clicking on stuff. And believe me, this is money I would never get to see back. And you know, these are the kind of practices that personally Facebook have done. And this is why I'm boycotting, boycotting Facebook Connect on this channel because of all these various different things. And this is why I'm not going to be purchasing any new uh, Oculus Quest or Facebook whatever things. And be very cautious about Facebook Horizon because they will implement the same things in the Facebook newsfeed inside of your metaverse that they're building. So do be very cautious about all these things. Guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope that this video does provide some information to you. Very sorry if you if you if you don't no, I'm not sorry if you don't agree to what I'm saying, but you know, if you don't feel comfortable <laughs> I am sorry, but at the end of the day, I believe in providing good information for the greater good of humanity. Guys, I'll see you after Facebook Connect and uh, take it easy. Bye for now.